rainy week here in Melbourne and I love the rain so much and unfortunately most of the time I feel like this winter when it's been raining I've been at work and there's nothing more that I want to do than to be home on those days instead of work with a cup of tea and a book and just be cozy you know so I'm really glad that today I'm home I get to enjoy the rain. Um, it stopped for a little while, so Archie and I did get to go out for his walk, which was very nice. And I just am planning to spend the day at home. So I started filming a vlog after my previous vlog, which was my first vlog back from my break, but I only read one book I think and then I didn't really update so I think I'm just gonna start from scratch I also just haven't been in the greatest place recently I've mostly just been very overwhelmed by life and just things happening that I feel like that vlog was very reflective of my stress and I just started to try to edit it and it was very unpleasant so I'm just going to throw away that footage and we're gonna start fresh we're gonna try and be, I guess, a little bit more positive and hopeful, maybe, <laughs> in this vlog. But I am still reading um, Fool's Assassin. I'm almost 200 pages into this. I feel like I'm starting to get to the point where I'm hooked and I'm not gonna be able to stop. It was a little bit of a slow start, I would say which is typical from Robin Hobb, but I think also too, there was a lot of hesitation on my part to pick this up and read big chunks of it because I'm so like in denial that this series is gonna end and I'm scared for what's to come because I just don't trust Robin Hobb with these characters that I love. So, by the way, I should tell you the date. It is the 30th of August. I cannot fathom how it's going to be September in two days. How? Please tell me how. I did recently finish the audiobook for I'm Glad My Mum Died, which I did like. And I am going to include in a wrap-up soon. I think I'm just going to do a wrap-up for all the books I've read this year and include that book as well because I think that's going to be the only book I actually finished in August and then we can start fresh in September. Since finishing I'm Glad My Mom Died, I haven't picked up another audiobook but I did download The Comeback by Lily Chu and I decided to download this because it's free on Audible if you remember and I listened to Lily Chu's other audiobook at the beginning of this year, The Stand-In and I am in the mood for that sort of story. I have no idea what the comeback's about, but I'm just hoping that it's just something light, easy to follow, hopefully kind of uplifting, because <laughs> like I can't have two depressing books going at the same time, you know? Especially when you yourself have been a ball of anxiety. You need something a little bit a little bit cheerier. I think that's all the updates I have. I'm trying to make today a balance of being productive with uni work and also self-care because there's a little bit of that needed right now or a lot of that needed right now. Do you want food? It's almost dinner time. Almost. Don't give me that look. Oh, Baba. Almost dinner time. <laughs> okay. Boop. Love you. Reading updates. I have a couple. I did start listening to the audiobook for The Comeback, Lily Chu's latest book. 
and I've had to DNF it for now. I actually found myself getting quite stressed while reading it. it follows a girl who, uh, she works in a law office, I think. Work is a huge part of her life and she is very stressed and under pressure at work and honestly the stress that this character was feeling in the book was rubbing off on me and I'm already stressed so I didn't want to read something that was really intense about like being productive, being under the pump at work. I want to read for distraction so I've had to put it on hold for that reason right now i may come to it eventually again i don't know i will say her other book um the stand-in was a little bit like that but with the stand-in the girl gets fired at the beginning so work isn't as much of a present in that book as it is in the comeback and yeah it's just it was so intense with work life and I'm like, oh my god, I do not need to read about this right now. <laughs> After quite a bit of back and forth and going through my options, I have settled on listening to This Woven Kingdom by Teratha Murphy. I feel like I don't say her name right. Hang on, let me double check this. Harper Collins and Harper Audio present This Woven Kingdom by Tahade Murphy. I'm currently on chapter 12. I'm not obsessed with it or anything, but I've gotten to the point where I've taken so long to decide what I wanted to listen to that I don't want to back out of listening to this now. So it's definitely not going to be a new favourite, but I wanted to listen to a YA fantasy that really wasn't going to take a lot of brain power for me to listen to. I will say I have read Terrorothers Murphy's other books I read the shanami series up until the first three books i know there's an additional three now but originally it was a trilogy so i read the original trilogy i was reminded while i was reading this one of the things i didn't like about the shanami series was i feel like she really lacks in world building it's very vague and that's happening again here and i just I'm like 12 chapters in and nothing much has really happened. All I can tell you is we follow this girl who is part human, part jinn from my understanding. It's interesting because the way we're being told her story is we're being kept in the dark about a lot of it, obviously to create mystery, but then I don't have clarity on a few details. So take what I say with a grain of salt. So she's part jinn, part human. She was once... Um, lived in a very luxurious life with her parents when they were alive. She is now a servant um, in disguise basically and she's working as a maid in a household and then she has a side job as a seamstress. And then we also are following a prince of a kingdom that she's living in. I think there's going to be a romance between the two. I'll be very surprised if it's not. Um, they've only had their first initial meeting, which was just them kind of crossing paths. Nothing too spectacular, but basically this prince has been off at war. We don't really know why, but he's been away fighting wars and he's now returned and his grandfather wants him to marry and eventually have an heir sometime soon. So they're planning a ball. It's reminding me of Cinderella, like just that initial setup. I mean, I've only got, I think, six hours of the audiobook left. It's not long. So I'm just going to continue on with it. It's what I'm in the mood to listen to, even though it's not going to be a favorite. I just feel like I've been in such an indecisive move and then I get more cranky the longer it takes me to try and figure out what I want to listen to or read. And then it puts me out of the reading mood altogether. So I'm just going to kind of continue with this even though it's not going to be a favorite it's saturday night now i'm not doing anything because i'm doing a double shift tomorrow which is <laughs> always fun so i plan to have an early night i need to probably do some like cleaning prep for lunch maybe watch some tv i kind of want to start the new lord of the rings series that amazon's just released so i might do that tonight and I definitely need to read some more of Fool's Assassin because things are happening there.
just getting ready to go to work. Um, lighting's a little bit atrocious right now. I am a few more chapters into this woven kingdom and I have thoughts. I have complaints really and I feel like I don't have the right to complain since I chose to read this book that I knew I wasn't going to love, that I knew complaints were a high possibility so I don't know I feel a little bit like a hypocrite like I can't make complaints. I think what I wanted was the comfort and just like fun light read that a lot of YA's have provided for me in the past but this this is just one of those YA books that's doing a lot of things I don't care about. So post these two characters meeting, every single scene has been about their meeting. Um, I've just gotten up to the stage where they've both sort of figured out who the other person is because their identities when they met were unknown. So the prince didn't know this girl was a maid and the maid didn't know that the prince was a prince and now she's just figured it out who he is and vice versa. Um, so they haven't met up again but they just know where to find each other now. I'm so bored, like there's nothing else going on. These characters have no personalities. Terera Marthy is doing that thing where she's over describing the appearance of the characters and very much under describing the characters' characteristics. I feel like I know so little about these characters still. Like I wish we knew more about this maid. Um, she's living in hiding, she's part Jin, but she's just like going about her life, like there's nothing else has happened like I wish we had something with her trying to get out of her current situation or trying to do something like she comes from a wealthy background like there's definitely more that I feel like is to her story and we're probably going to get down the track her um trying to get out of her current circumstances and change her life or maybe like avenge her family I feel like there's definitely some sort of plot along those lines that's going to happen but right now we've had no inkling of such thing and it's just about her living her life and this encounter with the prince that is the whole story and the prince's life he definitely has a little bit more going on he's got that um pressure to be the next ruler of the kingdom happening um but still like that's kind of what you would expect to come with a royal character there's nothing else happening there's nothing outside of that i just Give me more. Give me, give me drama. I want drama. Like, I don't mind if it's a little bit ridiculous. At least it's fun. That's what I want right now. Um, yeah. We'll leave it there. I feel like a little bit of a hypocrite for complaining so much, but I'm going to keep listening. I feel like I would have stopped with this book by now if I was physically reading it, but because I'm listening to the audiobook, I'm more inclined. And like I said, I've had such an experience, like this whole year, I've had such an experience of starting books and not going anywhere with them like finishing them and it's just gotten to the point where it's really quite frustrating and I feel like I'm not getting anywhere especially with my reading and I just want to continue and finish this which I feel like might make some people a little bit cranky because what's the point of reading a book if you're not enjoying it a lot <laughs> but here I am this is me this is my choice <laughs> hello I just filmed a whole clip of an update I'm gonna move back I'm very close to the camera right now and I realized the lighting was awful because I had you angled like that way because I wanted to hide my mess. I wanted to hide my clothes. I wanted to hide the bookshelf I brought that I have ignored for... It's been a couple of months and it's just been sitting <laughs> It's a really complicated one to put together. I need to give it another go or I need to go ask for help. Anyway, let me get on and do this update again. First update is I did complete this Woven Kingdom and I actually really enjoyed the last few chapters. It is a Cinderella retelling. Clearly I knew nothing going into this book, but it is a Cinderella retelling. It gets more and more obvious as the book goes on and I looked it up at the end and yeah, it's a Cinderella retelling. <laughs> the final scene, and I don't think this is a spoiler, but it, it is the ball. So it, the whole story sort of leads up to the ball and the final few scenes is at the ball. I really enjoyed the last little bit leading up to the ball and the scenes at the ball. What I loved about Tara Marthy's other series, Shadow Me, is her side characters. And that was what I was really hoping to love in here. But they're not really present for a lot of the story. Or they're coming in and out and they're not there much. This final few scenes and the whole ball scene is where all the side characters shine and I just 
really had a lot of fun. I felt like they created so much more fun dynamic to the story and to what was happening in between our main characters. The main characters though were so boring, like so boring. When I first finished the book actually, I was like, actually that was like fun. I, I enjoyed that last little bit, but then I remembered the rest of the story and um, yeah. No, it was not a fun time. I was not invested. When it comes to fantasy books, okay, I'm perfectly okay with a book to be just about the vibes and to not really have much of a plot. It has to have something that has my attention, right? This had absolutely nothing. It had no vibes. It had really boring characters. And oh my god, I'm sounding really harsh and I kind of feel like I need to stop. But... It just wasn't it for me. It really wasn't it. And I'm disappointed and sad, but I also feel a little tricked by the end because of how much I enjoyed it. So will I read the sequel? I don't know. Please tell me if you've read the sequel and if it's better because if it's worse, then definitely no. Yeah. In the romance, I feel like this whole book was supposed to be about this romance and could not care less. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna stop it there. I gave it two stars. I feel like I've said as much as I can say about that. But I got an iPad. I've been wanting one for quite some time and I finally got one and I've been reading some manga. So I started off with reading the Fruit Baskets manga sequel, which is Fruit Baskets Anella. I've read volume one and I think a little bit of volume two. Um, I'm reading it just by the chapters. So I'm not entirely sure exactly how that equals out to which volumes I have completed. But that's whereabouts I am. I recently, this year, a few months ago probably, <laughs> time's weird, I watched the recent anime ad adaptations of Fruit Baskets and I loved it, which was kind of a surprise because I did try to watch, or I think I watched the whole original anime adaptation from the early 2000s back in the day and I never was the greatest fan of it and I felt like I was missing out because everyone loves fruit baskets but I never read the manga because I watched the anime first and then I wasn't super interested in it but I've seen things earlier this year about it and it made me curious that I started it and I just love it and I'm really enjoying this sequel as well although I will say it is pretty much the exact same story repeated um, of the first series. This series follows the children of the characters in the first one. I'm also going to try and read some more manga and graphic novels because I did download some from my library app which this is just a whole new game for me. I feel like a huge reason why I've never gotten super into graphic novels. I did get into a phase where I was really into manga. That was a while ago though but I haven't read manga in a while. Is because it's so hard to get your hands on. It's so expensive First of all, on the iPad, it's like such a nice experience reading it. So I feel like we're on a new, we're on a new thing here, a new like reading journey, which I'm really excited about. I also did start another audiobook. I've started the audiobook for The River of Silver, which is a collection of short stories that take place in the Devabard world. I loved the Devabard trilogy. It's been probably two years now since I finished it. Wow. That's crazy. I just love it. I just feel like it's so dramatic and the magic's so interesting and the stakes. And I love a good desert setting fantasy. It's got gin and it's just so fun. I am really enjoying this short story collection. We are following multiple different characters and you do need to read the trilogy prior to reading this book because it has major spoilers. Like from the first short story, there's like huge spoilers so yeah don't recommend reading this prior but I really enjoy being the back in this world there's actually a bit I've forgotten as well so I've had to like look up some details because my memory she ain't good and um I, I put this down because um where am I let me tell you where I am I'm up to chapter 11 page 231 we've just had our first death and I actually, I cried. I wasn't expecting to cry. I mean, I was expecting to cry because it's Robin Hobb and she always does make me cry, but not expecting to cry this soon. And like the person who died, I didn't think I would cry when they died. 
I know that sounds really mean, but yeah. Also, I need to add, I finally know who B is. I've always heard about this B character that is introduced into this trilogy, and now I know the reference, and I have so many theories on her that I will not tell you because spoilers. I keep going back and forth between wanting to like binge read this and then wanting to take it slow. Like the hesitation on my part, I'm all over the place, honestly. Yeah, okay, I think that'll have to do. But I've decided I'm going to wrap the vlog up here because I've been editing this video and I had a lot more footage than I realized. And I don't want the vlog to be too much longer than it currently is. So I'm just going to say goodbye, basically, in this clip. And I'll start a new vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you're enjoying whatever you're currently reading. And leave me a pink heart emoji if you've made it this far. Hope to see you next time.